the uh, vacuum pump I'm going to use. This is the so-called uh, four pump. It's a mechanical uh, pump with uh, sliding vanes in here and oil filled. That vacuum leads over to this pump, which is a, an oil diffusion pump. And the principle there is that this uh, diffusion oil, which has a very low vapor pressure normally, is put down in this canister here where there's an electrical here. The vapor rises up and due to cold water being circulated through this jacket coming in here and out here, the oil vapor condenses and drags molecules down with it and goes back down into the reservoir here. So this might get the vacuum down to 10 microns or something like that and then this will bring the vacuum down to what you need for an electron tube and my exhaust tube is here and here I will put the glass exhaust tube from my experimental electron tube I don't know how long this uh, takes to bring down the vacuum to where I want it that's part of the experiment here we have um, Dow Corning high vacuum grease. I use that in here around the gasket and also in this rubber connecting tube here just to get the best possible seal. And here, even though you can't really see it in the video, there's a um, what is normally a plumbing clamp with a piece of uh, silicone rubber underneath it and there's a sm very small hole drilled in this tube and that's uh, called a slow leak and of course what you need it for is when you seal off the tube up here, you don't want to just let the vacuum off suddenly or oil will spray back into this pump here. So you'll open up this little hole and let the uh, vacuum come down slowly. This pump here uses this Vactor, Vactor I guess it is, mechanical vacuum pump oil. It has to be put in a filler over here and there's a gauge on the other side that tells you when you've got enough in there and as I said this is the diffusion pump oil specialty fluids MVT20 it says thanks to Don Asquin we got some of that between the two of us so that's the vacuum pump so, well, the mechanical pump was driven by this like motor here of course and as a matter of how to determine how or when the vacuum is down to what it should be what I might use up here is a um, maybe a high frequency RF field to check for ionization in the vacuum tube as the vacuum pulls down. If there's a, there's a purple glow then the vacuum isn't yet good enough. So that's really about all there is for the vacuum pumps themselves. Here I'll show a bit of the process I hope to use. Here's my uh, automobile lamp and what I'm going to do is break off the glass bulb somewhere around here then I will also do the same here and extract the um, filament and its two support wires and that will still leave them secured by this little bit of glass right here so they have some rigidity while I go on to uh, the rest of the process now what I'll do here's my so-called glass press that I'll make out of a test tube uh, base and four wires one wire here another here let me go back to that other diagram briefly what I'm going to do is spot weld one iron wire there and one iron wire there before I cut these two because then I'll have the support and things won't uh, get out of alignment or maybe even break filament so I'll put th maybe three or four glass spacers on this wire because this these two wires and the filament are going to be inside the grid assembly just because that's easier for me to do. Here I will have cut off the, uh, the remaining wires that were on the uh, lamp uh, filament assembly and I've gotten spot welded there hopefully. And once that's done I can uh, wind my grid spiral it'll look like that. It's going to be self-supporting I hope because this iron really thick, fairly rigid and I'll just do a loose spiral not very large because this filament is probably only uh, 
quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths inch long at the most. So I'll then have that done. I, I will I will have had to do this spiral before I've pressed any of these wires into the glass because I'm certainly not going to be able to wind it after I've got the filament assembly in there. Then I can put my closer wound spiral, which will be the plate, thus outside that one. And again, this uh, close wound plate spiral will have been done and uh, sealed into the glass uh, beforehand, which makes it uh, pretty awkward actually. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here, particularly after I start uh, heating the the enclosing tube up. Just while I'm talking about sealing things in glass, here's a um, small test I did with a small Pyrex tube and the copper wire sealed into the right hand side and the iron wire previously electroplated with copper in the left hand side. So here's what the copper looks like. If I can get an extreme close up here and keep it in focus, see there are some bubbles forming um, in the seal and I believe uh, there are certainly are gaps along the wire. It hasn't uh, wetted the, as they say, wetted the wire sufficiently. If I go over to the iron wire side here, you can see how I have not got the black oxide I would get with iron normally and in that seal it seems to be quite uniform in the color and uh, as far as I can tell no uh, any no spaces around the wire that did not wet the wire. Before I start some of my uh, assembly of the insides of this tube I'm going to electroplate my steel wires. Here I have my little test tube of copper sulfate with just a couple of drops of uh, sulfuric acid in it and I only need one and a half volts. It's a little bit of electroplating. Uh, if I used anything more I think the uh, plating would go on in too much of a powder form. And uh, one puts the positive lead to the copper that's uh, in the test tube and the negative lead to my wire here. So I just dip it in and almost instantly I can see small bubbles of uh, hydrogen forming and I'll put it right down in. The whole thing doesn't really have to be electroplated but um, still can't hurt because I have to put some glass spacers on these wires anyway to keep them rigid while I'm attaching the filament. I think I'll wait for about uh, 10 seconds. Just let that sit there for a little while and uh, then I'll do I'll do four of these wires so I'll just have them ready and not have to go through this process again. I'm now going to start the internal construction of this uh, hopefully successful electron tube and the first thing to do is uh, deal with the wires that are going to go to the filament to my or the filament of my automobile lamp here. So I'll uh, show a little diagram of what, what I intend to do and then show the process. The construction is actually going to be a bit different than I had first thought because I realized I'm going to need a lot more rigidity in the mounting for this filament. So what I'm going to do is, if this will show up on the camera, I have here my automobile lamp filament and it's been joined to these larger wires that come out of the existing bulb. and I will bring up one iron wire and spot weld it there, but uh, the other one in order to simplify construction I'm going to bring it up with glass spacers on it like so and I will loop it over and I will join the two of them here with another glass spacer but the, in this case with the wires sealed into the glass tube then I can spot weld that there and spot weld it there cut the wire there and cut the wire there and I'll have um, the rigid structure I need. Before I do that though I'm going to have to actually seal the wires into glass tubes in order to make them rigid enough to even do that part that I just described. So I'm going to have these two wires I'll get these little glass tubes courtesy of Michael's Crafts as you remember I'll have two of them side by side and the two iron wires coming together then I will apply the torch to these and fuse them together and around the wires then I can do this um, business of the little tube up there and the loop 
and the filament across it like so and that'll provide me quite a rigid structure for going ahead then later with the grid which I'll also bring up through, that's my plan at the moment, another glass tube, fuse it to that one, put it around here, and then another glass tube over here with my plate wire coming up through it. So that's the plan, we'll see how that works. These are soft glass tubes as it happens, so they're very easy to work with, and they'll be far enough away from the glass seal down here, presumably, hopefully, that they won't melt when I'm doing the seal in the Pyrex. Now I have my map gas torch going here and my two wires with the two little glass tubes. You might be able to see it there, I hope. And I'm going to put this in the flame. You'll uh, know the glass is melting when you see the uh, yellow flame come off it. And I can tell, I think when the wire is red hot inside the glass, that these glass tubes have sealed to the iron and to each other. That's the plan. So let's see, and as I said before, this kind of glass doesn't need a lot of annealing. In fact, it's getting none at the moment. So I feel fairly safe in leaving it at that. This is a package of those uh, little glass tubes I mentioned. And here are my two wires and uh, the two glass tubes melted together and sealed to the iron. So now um, what I have to do is bend this other one over in the hook that I mentioned, put, under, put the other glass tubes on and the glass tube between these two connections that uh, will seal them together without connecting them. I have my assembly here now with the two tubes I previously sealed to the wires here, then uh, some insulating glass here, and down here uh, a small glass tube but with a gap in the middle so that there's no connection between these filament wires. So I'm now going to melt the glass on this middle one, hopefully without it cracking, and then I'll have the kind of rigid join that I want Here you see I have the little glass tube here that I've melted on to seal these two wires together without making any connection between them. So it's, it's quite a rigid assembly. And at the back I have more glass tubes which I didn't bother melting onto the wire because um, I don't think it'll serve any purpose. And anyway, they're there to insulate the grid because the grid is going to go around both these wires it just makes for easier assembly for me I mean normally that wouldn't happen the, the second wire would be outside the grid plate uh, uh, wires but that's just too complicated in terms of glass work and so forth and uh, getting I'd have to use mica spacers or something like that so this appears to be the simplest way for me to proceed here you see my spot welder it's uh, not much, it's a um, large capacitor, about uh, 470 microfarads at 200 volts here. Um, it's charged through a 2.7K resistor to about, a, um, oh, about 120 volts. And here is a very, very large SCR, which I discharge through my homemade um, welding tongs here. These are copper electrodes here and here. Wires going off to the SCR and the negative pole of the uh, capacitor. So I have here my filament assembly. I should perhaps show a close-up of that while I've got you here. There. Uh, you can see the filament on top and the remainder of the, the glass tube here. And I'm going to spot weld it now to those two wires that I mentioned in previously. Get the spot welder there, press the red button, get a nice healthy blast and welds my electrodes right to the wire too, so I'll do that as well. Again, and, and it seems to be assembled in the way that I had hoped it would be. 
Here I have my filament here and the old lamp uh, exhaust tube here and I'm going to now be able to chop these two wires and hopefully my spot weld is strong enough to stand the rest of the procedure that's going on with uh, this tube. Now I mentioned also I think this filament is going to have to be dipped in um, nitrocellulose lacquer and the remains of an Aladdin uh, lamp mantle to get the thorium uh, oxide into it. So here I am in my garage with my Coleman mantles where I hope to get thorium powder by burning it and crushing it. Now I'll do this in a little petri dish and uh, then crush it up into this little jar and put it in some safe place. As I said before, I used to crush these things up just for fun when I was a kid with gay abandon and uh, really not knowing about the very slight radioactivity of the thorium in them. So I'll be careful here. So here's my mantle. Um, in the old days one just struck a match to these and they burnt quite easily, but let's see what happens. I'll persevere. Well, there it goes. It's uh, quite black as you see when these things were used in a uh, Coleman lantern. It's probably some of you know from camping in the old days they ultimately turn white and this one is turning white as the sort of uh, glow of the residual burning takes place there. So I'll uh, hold it here, let it go completely white and then stick it in my petri dish or it might be suitable just for dumping into my little jar. Well that worked uh, quite well. Here I have my little jar of the leftover debris from the burnt Coleman mantle. Um, I'm thinking I will maybe put a ball bearing in the jar and shake it about in order to pulverize it so I won't get this dust all in place. And I'll of course do that uh, out here in the garage too. I'm uh, a heck of a lot more careful now that I'm older and wiser. Than well, here I have my thinned down nitrocellulose lacquer here and my Coleman uh, lantern mantle powder here and my filament. So I'm going to uh, put some of this thin down nitrocellulose lacquer on here and quickly put on some of this powder and hope that uh, I haven't done too much. I guess if I do I can maybe get it off again with um, uh, solvent, maybe fingernail polish remover which has uh, among other things, acetone in it. So uh, I've liberally dusted this thing and I'll have to let it dry. While we're waiting for the lacquer and um, thorium powder to dry in the filament, I got my grid and plate assembly together. There you see I have again used these little glass tubes to fuse together the two leads coming from my um, plate and grid and I have now two concentric spiral windings which you can sort of see there I think there so what I'm going to do once this um, filament is dry I will thread this these two together and uh, join them again using those little glass tubes uh, for rigidity then I should be ready for the, the final test which is uh, rather critical of uh, sealing them into glass in preparatory to sealing the whole thing into a test tube. Now I have my filament with the thorium powder on it or what I presume is thorium powder and my grid and plate uh, electrodes here. So I'm uh, holding them all together with this uh, surgical clamp, I forget what you actually call it. And now comes the tricky part, I'm going to have to put uh, another little glass tube over on this side and uh, use the torch and seal them together without destroying everything else I've done. Here I have my whole assembly uh, caught in this 
uh, medical clamp and uh, the glass tubes I've already fused together are here. So this is where one really needs some glass blower skills, which really I don't have, but still I've done enough experiments that maybe I can make something work here. Well, there are, there are many steps between failure and success, and I discovered that uh, I don't have enough heat even with my MAP gas to seal the evacuation tube to the end of the test tube. So what I had to do in the end was to draw an evacuation tube out of the end of the test tube. So I poke it with a screwdriver, thus, give me something to uh, attach to with the pliers, and I'm going to pull an evacuation tube out of the end of the test tube. So I do that this way, and keep uh, bringing the heat down on the test tube and try to draw it to a, a diameter that's going to be correct for the fitting that I have on my vacuum pump. And it does turn out to be a bit um, uneven, but I can live with that as long as there's sufficient space for sealing off the tube uh, after I've got the vacuum into itself. So I give it maybe uh, a little longer than this, and at the appropriate point, I will flip the glass off at a point where I know it's going to fit on my fitting on the vacuum pump. So I'll leave it at that, and you can see, I hope, what that evacuation tube looks like. I'll clip it about there, I would say. Now, this will have to be annealed a bit. I've just done this now to show you how it was pulled out. But I will anneal it in a uh, slightly less hot flame. And that should be okay without cracking for the evacuation and the final sealing process. So now I have my large test tube with its evacuation seal. Hopefully this is annealed properly so it doesn't all crack when I apply the torch after evacuating it. Then my electron tube assembly goes in like so and I seal around here and I have all kinds of opportunities to make a mistake there as well but nevertheless this will then all fit on my evacuation pump like so and I'll draw it down and seal it off here so that's where I'm at at the moment uh, as I say, the next big thing will, will be this uh, glass seal here. Uh, when this is finished, just to be sure, if I don't crack it in the evacuation process, I'm going to fill this little cavity here with uh, either vacuum grease or maybe uh, sealing wax. And I'll do something around here too, just in case there are little cracks that I don't know about. Um, I hate to have that whole thing spoiled because of some minuscule crack that I couldn't see. The torch is running at full heat, so I'll start passing this through the flame of the torch, try to get it warmed up gradually. I'm uh, very afraid that this is going to crack the glass insert, in which case I'll down my tools and uh, have a beer perhaps and start all over again at least uh, with this bottom part uh, as I say I'm very leery about how this is going to turn out but I'll keep persevering here now I've got the, the appropriate color up here I bend the glass lip down around the test tube itself it's hard to get it all sufficiently hot at one time but anyway, it's going, we'll see. Hopefully if I get this down around here, then with another application of heat, the thing will actually seal. And then I will have to do a very good job of annealing. Otherwise, I will crack something when it uh, finally cools down. It apparently working, but as I said before, I'll still have to seal around this lid. Done a
complete press here across the the whole width of the test tube. I'll show a close-up of that just so you can see um, what the simpler construction looks like. So here it is in a little close-up, a little more of a close-up view. Uh, down here is the evacuation tube that I've pulled from the top of the test tube. In the middle is my uh, set of tube elements and here is where I have press the glass across the, the four leads. Now because of my past experience with trying to seal iron wire into Pyrex, even though I copper plated these, just to be sure, I put this thing up this way and uh, put a bunch of crazy glue in here and let it settle down along the, the wires and I'll let that uh, harden for several days maybe to outgas and then I'm going to probably pack vacuum grease in here and then seal this with epoxy and here I am in the confines of my somewhat messy basement and I now have my experimental tube mounted on the uh, oil diffusion pump up here I have put the black silicone rubber and let it uh, cure down at the bottom here the evacuation tube is sitting on a cushion of silicone rubber and the silicone rubber is also brought up around the evacuation tube so that I'm hoping that's going to provide uh, a good seal uh, the atmospheric pressure will push this down on the silicone rubber cushion so assuming I've got a good round here too which has been sealed with uh, vacuum grease on an o-ring that's inside there I should be okay for drawing down a vacuum on this and I think what I'm going to do first of all is just pump it down using the four pump and I'll have a an RF uh, high frequency and high power RF source which I'll maybe attach to one of these leads and check for uh, the purple glow inside the tube and uh, see from that if I've got a leak that's so great that the, the rest of the operation is going to be worthwhile. Um, if that proves to be okay then I'll bring ice water down to uh, the top of the jacket of the diffusion pump and recirculate it from the outlet down here up to uh, the pail where I'll keep the water with a uh, small water pump and uh, if my RF source eventually shows the purple glow in here to uh, be uh, diminishing and disappearing at some point I will light my filament at half voltage which would be about six volts and uh, hopefully that will set the uh, thorium oxide on the filament by burning away the nitrocellulose lacquer. That's supposed to be the theory anyway. And then uh, I'll continue pumping for a while just to be sure. And then flame it here with my torch. Be very careful to warm it gradually otherwise I'll crack it and the whole uh, thing will be no good then. So uh, that's my plan for the moment. We'll um, pump it down check for ionization and check for leaks and go from there. Here I've got my pump running and my tube on the top but uh, without the diffusion pump operating at the moment as I said I'm going to use my uh, high frequency uh, relatively high power R power supply here to check for ionization in the tube and so I'll put a lead on here this is the plate lead and bring it over to my the back of my power supply here and I do see a column of a very light blue ionization in the tube it's probably too small on the camera but uh, that at least means it's capable of being pumped down I'm going to let this run a while and see if the uh, blue glow of ionization changes Eventually it should uh, almost disappear if the vacuum is getting reasonably high. Here's a close-up of the tube just in the off chance that I can actually photograph this blue glow. I think it's probably too faint to show. It actually shows up more in the evacuation tube than it does up here. But I can definitely see it, which uh, is a good sign.
Well, today will be the acid test. I have my diffusion pump hooked up to um, a source of cooling water here, and uh, my power supply is over here, one for testing for ionization and the level of vacuum, and the other one when, if the tube actually works, to try and get some idea of the characteristic curve of it, and a number of meters to uh, provide me with data for those curves. So I'll uh, start pumping the tube down, test for ionization. Uh, when that disappears, I will pretty well know that the vacuum is going down as low as I want, and then I'll start the filament at half voltage, that's 6 volts, burn off the nitrocellulose lacquer on it, and then I'll test for emission. So I'll start the machinery and go from there. Well, I'm now at the blue ionization stage, as tested by my high-frequency, high-power, high-voltage RF supply here. I can see it right up in the uh, filament area, and it's uh, getting uh, less, so the vacuum's still going down. I have my water pump working now to cool down the jacket of the diffusion pump here. Down in my pail, I have snow and water, and a little aquarium pump and uh, that seems to be cooling down nicely so that'll be cool by the time I turn on the diffusion pump which will be very shortly I think. The diffusion pump has been on now for about uh, 10 minutes and I'll uh, check for ionization glow. There's still some there as you can see but certainly nothing uh, like what it was so it looks like the pumping speed of this small pump is going to be quite slow and probably I may need even a half an hour uh, before I've got the vacuum I need. But I was just able to finish a um, what I hope is a set of characteristic curves. I managed to get the vacuum pump down up here using my diffusion pump after roughly, uh, I guess it must have been 30 minutes to 40 minutes until the blue glow was essentially gone. There might have still been some ionization there at 100 volts plate voltage. Well, this is the moment of truth when I had to uh, switch to the exhaust tube here and seal it off my diffusion pump. I'll pull up on this as I see the glass uh, starting to thin here and hopefully I'll be able to separate it and still keep the seal in my tube. But uh, at least while it was on the diffusion pump, I managed to get a couple of characteristic curves, which are very, very rough to say the least, but still um, a little bit more than I had even hoped to get. Okay, I'm uh, warming my tube here by passing the flame back and forth across it a few times. I'm uh, not very hopeful about this process, to tell the truth even if I managed to uh, seal the tube properly uh, because I didn't get to bake it out I had no real reason or no means of doing that that is to keep this sufficiently hot to outgas all the internal elements I uh, even by now possibly uh, there's been enough gas uh, expand the internal metal elements and even the glass that uh, the tube might not be uh, workable so this is, I can see the uh, <coughs> vacuum drawing it up. I hope this is going to work. Let's see here. I don't seem to have it hot enough yet. There it comes. I'm twisting it slightly. And then I will draw it up and go like so. And there I have my and it does appear to be a proper seal. I'll try and get a close-up of this so you can see what the seal looks like. Now my tube stuck in my grandson's Play-Doh. Works well and uh, here's how the seal looks. The vacuum pulled the glass down a little bit here but didn't uh, implode it into the tube which is what I was afraid of and uh, up in my vacuum pump of course I still have the remains of the tube which I can now take off. So that was more successful than I could hope for. I, I am not very hopeful and it won't take long for the metal elements to outgas that 
adsorb gas um, because I didn't have any means of uh, heating the whole tube and the internal structure as they do in a production facility. Here you see two characteristic curves of my experimental tube that I was able to measure while I had it on the vacuum pump with uh, full vacuum from the diffusion pump. The uh, curve here is at minus one grid volts and this curve is zero grid volts with the grid grounded. And according to the usual way of determining amplification factor, I take the increment in grid voltage and the increment that corresponds to that in plate voltage. Well, here's my little one tube radio setup in a standard uh, grid leak circuit. I've got here my um, tuning coil, tuning capacitor over here. There's my tube with a 150 picofarad capacitor to the grid and a 2.2 meg um, leak resistor. And my earphones here, 120 volt B plus power supply over there, and my 12 volt battery here, which I drop down with a rheostat until I get the emission uh, just right so that the tube actually works. So um, with that set up, I'll turn on my A battery and adjust the filament and um, to demonstrate, although I'm going to put the microphone on the earphone here, demonstrate uh, the reception of one of the local uh, stronger radio stations. I'll now connect the uh, battery at about uh, 8 volts to my tube and we'll see what we get. When I was doing that experiment, I noticed that uh, a too bright filament is not a great idea. I suspect because my tube is, as I mentioned previously, a bit gassy, um, you have to have the electron emission just so, or at the B plus voltage that I'm using, which is about 120, one uh, probably gets ionization in the gas, although I, I couldn't see it by just looking at it. Here's a little more of a close-up of my radio. As I mentioned before, the tuning coil, tuning capacitor, and here's my tube. I'm just going to turn that on so you can see how bright the filament glows when it's actually working. Uh, sort of lights up like a little lamp, as one might expect. But uh, that's as bright as it wants to go uh, before the radio operation uh, actually gets worse. A few words to end this video with as to what I would do again if I was making another tube, which I may do at some point. I would certainly exhaust the tube for longer than I did this one, and I think I might not have had the right charge of oil in my diffusion pump, so that requires a lot more care, and possibly put some magnum wool in the bottom of the tube and find a way to uh, vaporize it as a getter and uh, that would certainly stabilize the tube to some extent even though I wouldn't have the means to bake it out like uh, others have done um, experimentally and uh, this has been seen in a very good video on the internet of course but still for um, primitive apparatus one can make uh, a functioning vacuum tube in your basement and uh, this is the proof of that